Tonight is the night. Talent's on the move. You guys, have your tickets out. What's going on? The half hour. You guys put your hands together for Chris DeStefano. I know I have a douchebag haircut. Is that what it is? I know. I know I look like a beer pong champion date rapist. Personal trainer. I know who I am. And I apologize to the group. Uh, there's nothing I can do about this right now. My hair used to be worse. It, I legit used to have, a, I used to have a faux hawk. Like a Tony Hawk skate ramp aerodynamic haircut. But then I saw the great Gatsby, Leonardo DiCaprio, comb that shit over, yes. I will never let go, Leo, I'll never let go. If you're watching, I'm not letting go. Call me, or have your people call me. Or have your people call my mother. <laughs> All right. No, you know, I'm happy now. No, I am, you know, happy, you know, you live life, you know, but, you know, you went, I went through stuff, you know, I just went through a breakup, and I was tough. Look, I completely handled this breakup like the woman. I was the absolute girl. Every single day, I just drank Pinot Grigio and listened to Michael Bublé. That was my whole life. <laughs> My whole life, Pinot Grigio and Michael Bublé for three frickin' months. Every workout I did, I called it Pinot 90X. Because <laughs> I would just drink a bottle of Pinot Grigio and then try to do P90X <laughs> and just send pictures of my shitty body to my ex-girlfriend's new humongous black boyfriend, if I'm being honest. <laughs> you know, and I became like, uh, you know, like very oversensitive, you know, over-perceptive about things, like I just need to let go. Like I got into a fight with a kid, you know? I just got into a fight with a kid over something meaningless. It was ridiculous, I create these things in my head. I was getting ice cream. <laughs> Nine-year-old kid in front of me orders pistachio ice cream. I'm like, that's an adult flavored ice cream. <laughs> what else do you want, espresso? <laughs> You're nine. You get chocolate ice cream with rainbow sprinks <laughs> or vanilla ice cream with chocolate sprinks. You gotta have sprinks, you're a kid. Put some sprinks on it. If I was the cashier, I wouldn't even give it to him. I would've said pistachio. Let me see your divorce papers. Recent colonoscopy. What have you been through, kid? <laughs> That's like a fun flavor to you? It's green, it has nuts in it, you little frickin' psycho. It's not fun. And I remember he was with his mom, and he looks at his mom, he goes, come on, mom, you know I love pistache. <laughs> I said, pistache? I'm gonna kill this <laughs> kid. <laughs> you know, like I talk to kids, like, I, you know, I was, a, I, I didn't really, you know, I was like, kind of like an idiot little kid too, you know? Just be like a little jerk, you know? Like, remember that show, DuckTales? Remember that show? Remember? Yeah. It, was, it would go, yeah. DuckTales, woo-hoo! Remember that? Woo-hoo! Make that sound. Like, what I thought, if, if you were my friend and I thought you were lying, right? Thought you were telling a tale, I would make that sound and embarrass you. <laughs> like, I remember, like, one of my friends came, it was like, we were 16, he was like, guys, I just lost my virginity last night. I was like, did you? Woohoo! <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're lying, dude. You're such a liar. <laughs> but, now, but then, you know, basically life woohooed me because I have no friends anymore. They're like, yeah, go stick your dick in the Pinot Grigio bottle, bro. <laughs> go do that. So we're not hanging out with you. But, you know, dad, my dad's around. That's good. My dad's like, you know, he's older now. He's a friend, you know? It's good. It's, hel it's helpful. You know, we're both from New York. You know, we have these accents. Like, I can't hide it. Okay, one lady. She, that's, you, you got balls doing that in Boston. Good for you. Yeah. Good. No, shut up. Come on. No, but, you know, we got, I can't hide it. You know, there's nothing I could ever do. We got, it's like bad. We don't pronounce the R's. You know, that's what I've noticed. It's not New York. It's New York. Skip the R always. But my dad now, like I said, he's getting older. 
He's adding R's into words that don't need R's. There's no R balance in this guy's life at all. But he never figured out. First it was no R's, now it's too many R's. Huh? Like he goes to the doctor the other day. I was like, how was it? He was like, how was it? Told me I got full-blown diabetes. <laughs> I said, doc, scientifically, what does that mean? <laughs> you need me to get on Google? I know Google. <laughs> well, Google.com, what am I, dumb? Think I know Google.com? And he always has the wrong word for what he's talking about. Like it's close, it's close, but it's 100% the wrong word that means something totally different. Yeah, the doc said the cartridge in my knee, it's no good. You know the cartridge in your knee? You mean cartilage? What, you need a frickin' printer? What are you talking about? Does your knee ink? It's a cartridge, see the knee? Get it at Staples, it's no good. But don't print, the knee, don't print. The doc said I gotta get on that eucalyptus machine. You ever do eucalyptus? You mean the elliptical? What are you working with koala bears? What are you talking about? Is this Australia? Rotary cuff too in the shoulder, the rotary cuff. It clicks, it's in the shoulder. What's your shoulder phone from 1968? rotator you guys just learned that too holy shit okay that's what happened there don't try to pull one over on me Boston I know you didn't know it's not rotary I don't get this one no it makes sense because it's shut up you didn't know that my dad you know he's funny he's like uh, he's like religious now but he's still a dirtbag it's, it's kind of cool it's funny like, like this example like you know we were in his car the other day and we were at the you know, church outside. He goes, make the sign of the cross every time you see the church. Make the sign of the cross when you see Jesus, okay? Make the sign of the cross. Then there was this really hot girl walking by, and he waited. She was right in front of the car, and he honked the horn and startled her. He's like, you see that? You catch her off guard, you get the tits to jiggle. Make the sign of the cross. Don't be disrespectful. But that had nice bounce. Those are Cuban boobs, for sure. <laughs> Five or six pounds, I know that. You know, I know my dad now, you know? Like, I you know, know him well, I know his games. You know, you just gotta freaking relax and let my dad be my dad. You just get upset about it. Not anymore. You know, like, he's got, this, he's got this thing that he does where he takes situations that aren't gay, makes them gay, and then involves some Latino guy I've never heard of. <laughs> That's his move. He's just like, what this guy does. Like, is his stiff neck a gay thing? Has that ever been a gay thing in the history of gay things? It's not a gay thing. It's a head and neck muscle spasm. You get it from sleeping wrong on a pillow. <laughs> I have the condition, I get stiff necks. I come down the stairs, I was like, Dad, I got a stiff neck, you know? Guess it was sleeping wrong on the pillow. He's like, yeah, sleeping wrong <laughs> on the pillow. Chris, come on. You out blowing Roberto last night? Who's Roberto? <laughs> Latin boyfriend Roberto. Kid thinks I don't know about Roberto. Who's Roberto? He does it to me all the time. Like once the Oscars and the New York Knicks game were on the same exact time. That's just a coincidence. I don't make the TV schedules. He's like, what do you want to do tonight? You want to watch the Oscars or you want to watch a Knicks game? You want to watch the Oscars? You go do that shit with Julio. Who the hell is Julio? <laughs> Latin boyfriend Julio. Kid thinks I don't know. I thought it was Roberto. So it is Roberto. <laughs> but he's supportive. I really, my dad's a very supportive man, which, you know, I gotta give him credit for that, you know? Like, if anything I wanted to do, he'd be, like, if I was like, Dad, I wanna quit comedy tomorrow, I wanna be a ballerina. He'd be like, whoa, that's gay. But you know what? No guy gets you a good tutu. I know a guy down in Brooklyn, he does tutus. He's a good kid. He gets you pink, something nice. I'm there for you. Do your spins. 
job is fun, you know? You get to travel a little bit. It's good. And like, you know, I'm from, like, don't be fooled by my whiteness. Do not be fooled by my Lance Bass in sync face, okay? <laughs> yes, I'm from the streets, baby. From this Bushwick, Brooklyn. If you guys know what that is, some people may know. Okay, you don't, I know. Some people may know it's an all black and Spanish neighborhood. I've been living there since 1984, 29 years, OWG, original white gangsta. <laughs> yes, representing the streets, mi gente. I know mad words in Spanish. Uh, mi gente, my people. Papa fritas, french fries. Goya is Goya. Banco Popular, Popular Bank. I know things. But lately, what's been happening all over, you know, New York and probably here, you know, all over, it's gentrification. That's what's been happening everywhere, gentrification. What's that? It's crazy ass white people from I don't know Waresville moving into my neighborhood, messing up my street credit. I was the original white dude. I was the only one. And now we got these weirdo hipsters coming in. Yoga classes, fruit shakes, racial harmony. We're gonna make a difference. You're gonna get shot. Dude, you're riding a unicycle down the street. Someone's gonna shoot you in the face. You're doing yoga off a street lamp. I will kick you in the pussy. What are you? It's hard for me though, because all my friends are black. That's the neighborhood I grew up in. All my friends are black. Now all my black friends think I know these new white people. I'm like, I have no idea who these new white people are, okay? I'm just as scared as you. I don't want them here, I don't need them here. They're, I don't like them. <laughs> but once a week, once every week, one of my black friends comes up to me, he's like, yo, Chris, for real, talk to your man, son. <laughs> That's your boy with his skinny ass jeans. <laughs> I'm just saying, how tight are his pants? About to get a yeast infection. <laughs> That's your man's pants. Very high pitched friends. That's your... It's a real question. One time my friend came up and goes, yo, Chris, let me ask you a white question. Okay. He was like, yo, what the f is hummus? <laughs> it's good. This job is good. It's a fun, fun thing to do. You know, you travel, you get to meet people. It's good. I had other jobs. Like before this, I was a, a physical therapist. You know, in this country, to be a physical therapist, you have to get a doctorate degree. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I was like, I'm not a real doctor. Like, it's confusing to the, my patients. I'm not a real doctor. I can't help you at all. You're gonna give me a doctorate degree? Me? Really? But it was, you know, cause I, and it was, it was. My patients come into me with in-depth medical problems. My glands are swollen. I have a fever. I'm just gonna massage your elbow. <laughs> I'll massage both elbows. I mean, that's, you think that'll work? Cause I have no idea what to do other than massaging your elbow. I'm a physical therapist. Not a real doctor. <laughs> but, you know, again, my family would come to me all the time. You know, like, this is real. Not making this up. My cousin Tommy comes over to me once. He goes, yo, dude, you're a doctor, right? I was like, I'm not a real doctor. He goes, bro, it's good enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> real. Unzips his pants, just takes his balls out. <laughs> right away. I'm, I'll never forget. I was, I was... At, it was a Sunday. I was eating a lean cuisine, watching Lifetime with my mother. It was perfect. <laughs> this kid, it was a nice little Sunday. Come over. This kid just takes his nuts out. He goes, dude, look real close at my left nut. Don't be a dick. He goes, look at my left nut. He goes, bro, is that a wart on my balls? That's what he says. He goes, I need to know if that's a wart on my balls. I got a big interview tomorrow. What, are you not gonna wear pants to the interview? <laughs> Why is that pertinent information to me? You're not gonna hire me? How about now? <laughs> Come on, wartless balls. It's good, no? All right. Again, all real. This is, I was like, first of all, your balls are on my kneecap. <laughs> Second of all, it's not a wart. It's a frickin' Rice Krispie. This kid had a Rice Krispie on his balls. He's 37 years old. Then he goes, you know what, dude? That explains it. That makes sense. How the hell does that make sense? What do you, teabag your cereal? It's 
snap, crackle, and pop, then I'm out. That's what I do. That's how I get ready, breakfast. I got to be on the David Letterman show a few months ago, and that was big. Oh, no, you're not, no, no, it's okay. Um, no, and it was cool because the other guest was John Travolta. Like, that was legit the other guest. But it was like not, you know, like not 70s, 80s John Travolta, like two years ago in the news, like that John Travolta. You know, like kind of creepy, the real, you know. And it was, you know, my mother's still a big fan. She had to take two days off from work. One for me, one for Travolta. <laughs> and my father was like, Travolta, you better clench your ass cheeks, kid. <laughs> Just saying, Johnny Travolta, whoa, Roberto. Johnny T-Bird, T-Bag. I was like, you're not coming with me to the show. You're not going to come with me and embarrass me in public like that, Dad. <laughs> but yeah, I met, I like met John Travolta. Like that really happened in my life. I'm going up next. He's getting off and he goes, you have on a beautiful suit. Are you nervous? I was like, now I am. <laughs> I wasn't until legit your whisper just made my lower lip quiver. How did you do that? How did you do that? and I'm lost in your baby blues right now, okay? It's the Atlantic Ocean in your eyes. I'm swimming. I'm, that's it. i am never call that thing the ocean again. It's for now, it's the Atlantic Travolta. I won't. <laughs> After I've seen what those eyes can do, yes. It was not, and you know, the moment was over. I think like nothing, nothing's gonna beat this. Nothing's gonna beat Travolta's eyes. I was wrong, okay? Because this is all real. Again, I don't lie up here. There's no point to lie. Just tell you what happened in my life. Do Letterman meet Travolta I go outside, okay, who's standing out there with no shirt on and Fila Velour sweatpants, Tracy Morgan. <laughs> He's just standing out there. I swear to God, there's people as witnesses. He's just standing there with Fila Velour sweatpants, no shirt on. I was with a girl, I was with, you know, my girl at, at the time, and um, she goes, oh, Tracy, Chris, he just did Letterman. He's never met me. He goes, oh, for real? Take a walk with me. <laughs> so now I'm walking down the block, yeah. I'm walking down the block with Tracy Morgan. I'm in his sweaty, shirtless ar armpit. He goes, yo, number one, your girl look mad, go with her toes, painted like Skittles. I like that, yo. <laughs> yo, taste of rainbow in them feet, son. White bitches' feet are crazy. <laughs> I love her feet. All real. I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna tell you exactly word for it. He goes, yo, I just sold out Australia. I was like, what? He goes, I just sold out the whole mother country of Australia. I was like, actually, Tracy, that's a continent. He was like, even better. <laughs> Selling out continents, yo. He goes, yo, so how you felt about tonight? He's holding back tears, I swear to God. How you felt? I was like, I felt good, you know? My, my girlfriend said John Travolta was laughing at me. He goes, I don't give a about Travolta. <laughs> then, okay, he takes his hand, he takes his hand, puts it in my butt, goes bus pass, and then gets on a public bus. <laughs> Not lying, Neil. Not lying, Neil. And I just stood there as my ass cheese jiggled and wondered, is that what my ass is worth, 250? Really? <laughs> you couldn't get like a first class ticket, you know, in a train or so you're gonna get on a public bus with no shirt on? I got it from the front and the back that night. Travolta on the lips, Tracy in the ass. It was good. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. It's good, you know, relationships. I, I was never like a comedian that would really even talk about relationships that much. But then, you know, you go through a heartbreak and you start to think about like, oh, relationships I wouldn't that was weird. Well, weird, you know? Like, this is serious. I dated this girl once three years, one blowjob. Yeah, I like some of the married guys. Like, three years, one blowjob's pretty good, kid. <laughs> what are you, like a porn star? This kid's on fire. Is he, is all, he, is he gonna be cocky like this the whole night? I mean, this kid, accomplishment after accomplishment with this one. I've got one since 86, so thank you. Three years, one blowjob. The problem is my mother loved her. My mother's a very Catholic, religious woman. Like I said, she loved her. So I was like, Mom, look, I'm breaking up with Lauren. My mother was like, honey, no. Jesus will find a way. I promise you. I love that Lauren with all my heart and soul. Promise, Mommy, whatever you do, you will not break up with her. You have to stay with her. Jesus will find a way. Trust in me, trust in God. Jesus told me to tell you she's the one. My boyfriend, she's the one. You stay with her, she's perfect. I just cracked one day. I was like, Ma, I know you like her. I've been dating her for three years. She's giving me one blowjob. 
That's what I said to my mother. And she was like, Christopher! Get rid of her. Thank you, guys. Chris and Stefano. Thank you.